it is almost October in like a month and a half. So do you want to pick a Rhinebeck sweater with me? <laughs> Rhinebeck this year is October 19th and 20th, which is in exactly two months. From the time of recording, it's in exactly two months. <laughs> anyway, that should be enough time to start and finish a sweater, right? Because that's what people do who go to Rhinebeck. They make a sweater. So I figure we should pick one. <laughs> I've narrowed it down. Okay, there are a lot of options. You don't have to do one that was designed specifically for Rhinebeck. You can make whatever sweater you want. Okay, I give you permission to make whatever sweater you want that is not specific for, like it wasn't released for Rhinebeck. Does that make sense? Make whatever you want. Don't feel pressure. <laughs> I have narrowed mine down to one, two, three, four four options. Okay. So in no particular order, let's talk about my options. The first one up is the Duval pullover from Blue Sky Fibers. Okay. This one is a worsted weight yarn. It used the a sample uses the Woolstock Tweed from Blue Sky Fibers which is 85% fine highland wool, 25% Donegal. And I did say it's worsted weight, right? <laughs> anyway, so I really like the polka dots on this one or the mosaic dots, as it says. It's a drop shoulder pullover. And I, along with stripes and tweed, polka dots are fun too. and. These ones, I like the uniformity of it. You can, you can almost play that um, that box game, <laughs> you know, where you, you make the polka dot lines and then you each, you take turns drawing a line and connecting the dots and whoever makes a box gets to initial it and whoever makes the most wins. It's kind of what I think of when I see this sweater, but it, I really like it. One, it's tweed which is like my favorite. And I like the dots. So it uses, uses what? It has finished bust measurements from 33 and three quarter inches up to 67 and three quarter inches. So you've got a lot of wiggle room in there. Um, doesn't say how much positive ease you should be looking for, but it uses quite large needles. 5.5 um, millimeter or 6.5 millimeter, which is US 9 and US 10.5. But I really like the sample color, that green. That is my jam. I love that so much. Um, the other colors that I would consider making this one in are the blue lichen. Let's see, the sample, what color did it say? But, so the blue lichen, I really like that one. I think, I don't know what the color of the sample was. But then I also kind of want a burnt orange sweater too. And I think this would look really pretty in the tiger lily, which is the burnt orange in the wool stock tweed. Anyway, so this one is at the top of the list because tweed, obviously. And it doesn't have, it doesn't say the positive ease that you're looking for. So I'm not sure about that. Oh, wait. It used the color Olive Branch. That is the sample color, that dark green. I love that one, that's very Christmassy. All right, so a drop shoulder pullover with mosaic dots. Um, I 
think it's done in the round. It doesn't say. Duval Pullover from Blue Sky Fibers. Next option comes from Quince Co. This is the Wind River Pullover. It was inspired by the movement of wind and water, and you can see that in the all over cables. And I really love the waviness of those cables. That is so pretty. It used the turn from Quince & Co, which is fingering weight yarn. So it's a fingering weight sweater. And turn is 70-30 wool and mulberry silk. It has beautiful colors. The one that they used was Tyrian color. Um, looking at the other color options ooh, for those cables. Again, I'm partial to the greens and blues. Um, basalt is gorgeous. I think we do a lighter blue, maybe the Booth Bay blue. It's a lot of bees. Booth Bay blue. Very pretty, very pretty color. Anyway, this sweater is drop shoulder. Again, this done bottom up in the round until you get to the armholes and then you split for sleeves. Um, the yoke is done flat and then shoulders are seamed using a three needle bind off. Um, the neck band is formed by first using an I-cord bind off and then you pick up stitches underneath the I-cord to create a ribbed neck band. So I haven't done that. So that would be a fun technique to learn on this sweater. Um, the suggested ease is zero to eight inches of positive ease. So your finished measurements go from 34 and a quarter inches all the way up to 64 and three quarter inches. And look, just those all over cables are gorgeous. I love it. And fingering weight, so yeah, that would take forever. Two months would be long enough for me to make that sweater though. I'm, I'm kind of speedy <laughs> when I get a project that I really like and I just focus on that. Um, yeah, so the Wind River Pullover from Quince & Co is fingering weight. The one from Blue Sky Fibers was worsted weight. And next up is also worsted weight. This, is it worsted weight? It is worsted weight. So this comes from Hudson & West. It is the Amelia. Yeah. I, <laughs> are you sensing a theme? I'm not, not really. Well, I've got two cabled sweaters in here. The one with polka dots. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so this one has a large central cable with rope twists on either side and then basket weave stitches for the sides and arms. I think it was the basket weave stitches that drew me into this one because I haven't done a whole lot of those and it looks really fun. <laughs> okay, so this uses the forge yarn. Um, the sample used the forge yarn from Hudson and West, which is worsted weight and um, it has domestically sourced merino and Coriadale wool. So it's US based wool. It's a 70 30 blend and a three ply yarn, which is very bouncy. The size choices in this one go from 41 and a half inches up to 71 and three quarter inches. That's a lot of ease there, which you want because the suggested ease is 12 inches of positive ease. The sample here was a size two made with 12 inches of positive ease. 
and that would be about right. I think that would be my size to make in this one. Is worsted weight. Your needle options are, it uses a US 8 for the body. Wait, size A? I don't know what that means. B for ribbing says C for neck. Oh, it uses three different needle sizes. Okay, so you have one size for the body, which is a US 8, one for the ribbing, which is a US 6, and then one for the neck band, which is a US 5. Um, I love those twisty ropey cables. Those are so fun to do. <laughs> I love them so much. Yeah, so this one is also a high contender. I like the forge yarn. They used the orange one, which is, I think, out of stock at the time of recording. But knowing me, I would go for the blues and greens. And I like the juniper color and the evergreen, which is just slightly darker than juniper. Those would be my top two choices to make this sweater. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, okay, so where are we at? We have a worsted weight from Blue Sky Fibers, fingering weight from Quince & Co, and then worsted weight again from Hudson and West. Okay, my last option I have been wanting to make ever since this pattern was released. It is the Salty Day Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. She, <laughs> I like her patterns a lot. I made two stripe pipe sweaters last fall. Um, I did one in the suggested yarn weight, which was a DK. I, and the other one I made was Christmas Colors. And that was a worst of weight, and so it's like really oversized. Yeah, I want to make it again <laughs> because I like stripes. So tweed, polka dots, stripes, you're gonna, and cables, you're gonna get me with those classic things. Anyway, back to Salty Days sweater. So this is DK held together with mohair. Uh, she used Sandness Garn Double Sunday, which is a DK weight, paired with the Soft Silk Mohair from Knitting for Olive. And I haven't used either one of those brands yet. One of these days, when I'm cool, I will use those. <laughs> but I just, I love the look of this sweater. It's very classic. I love the diamonds on the top. And it just, I love it. <laughs> I love everything about it. And I don't know what color I would want to do this in. Actually, no, I lied. I do know what color I want to do this in. I want to do it in a burnt orange color because I have been wanting a burnt orange sweater for several months now. I just haven't done it yet. I haven't found the sweater to do in burnt orange and I think it might be this one salty days and yeah. so it has multiple sizes available from an extra small up to a 5xl it is oh I forgot to tell you something about Hudson and West so the Amelia we're backtracking a little bit here because my brain isn't working Amelia from Hudson and West is made bottom up in pieces and then seamed. And sleeves are picked up at the armholes and worked from shoulder down to the cuff. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. All right, back to Salty Days again. <laughs> okay, so it got its name from the salt fields in Portugal. And the different sections of texture look like the intricate patterns of salt flakes. Have you ever looked at salt 
up close. It's interesting. They're kind of like snowflakes in the way that they're all kind of different. So it's done top down with drop shoulder and extra long sleeves for that extra bit of coziness. Um, so the yoke is worked flat when, while increasing for shoulder seams. Then you pick up stitches on the shoulders and then work the front yoke and then you join it together and work in the round for the body. Um, it has a double folded collar. I do like the collar on this one that it's not too high and so it's not going to feel like I'm choking and it's also not too low so where you can still feel the cold air coming down your neck that's not fun so I really like this one and it uses a US 8 needle so five millimeter and you don't have to use the mohair paired with it if you don't want to you can just use the one strand of the DK weight, or you can use a worsted medium weight yarn. Um, she, if you are changing which yarn you're using, if you're not using the mohair, she does suggest m the making a swatch. I don't do that. I don't make gauge swatches. <laughs> kind of a rebel that way. I just go for it. Okay. She has several different um, samples here. First sample is an off-white color, and then she's got um, this beautiful gray, and then pink, and then rusty orange color. And that's probably what made me want to do this sweater in the orange color is that sample. But then again, I would also, blues and greens, but I also have enough blues and greens in my wardrobe. I'm looking at a nearly finished sweater over there that is a blue green color. Let's review my options. Okay. Number one, the Duval pullover from Blue Sky Fibers. Okay. Number two, the Wind River pullover from Quince and Co. Number three, the Amelia from Hudson and West. And number four, the Salty Day Sweater from Veronica Lindberg. Now I want you guys to cast your votes in the comments, okay? And I would say the one that gets the most votes wins and that's the one that I'm gonna make, but that's not true because I already picked the sweater and I already purchase the yarn for it. So if the one that I picked ends up being number one from the comments, you know that that's the one I'm going to make. If it's not, I'm going to make my sweater anyway. <laughs> Just have fun voting. Okay. And whatever. Okay. No, let me rephrase that. Whatever sweater is number one, I will make that one. If it's the one that I picked, then I will pick the sweater that was voted number two. Okay, if you pick a different sweater for the for me to make, then I will make that one. Am I making sense here? Okay, let's try this one more time. Vote for your favorite sweater down in the comments. The one that has the most votes I will make. If it's the one that I pick, then I will make number two, the second most popular sweater. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, let's pick a Rhinebeck sweater. Okay, let's see which one do you pick? Blue Sky Fibers, Quince & Co. Hudson and West, or Veronica Lindbergh? Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think.